Hey guys, it's Sasha and I'm back today to talk to you about Bahamian authors. Now this idea came to me from Run Right Reads and Comfy Cozy Up. They are hosting a readathon called Carabathon. Now the readathon is going to be from June 11th to June 20th. But the entire month of June is actually Caribbean Heritage Month, so that is why they are hosting the readathon. The point of it is to read Caribbean authors, but today we're going to be talking about Bahamian authors because Bahamian authors aren't really that popular in like the whole realm of the reading world so I just wanted to highlight some of them today and also give people options who are participating in the readathon chance to read the different genres. I will leave um, the different genres down below for you to click and see um, which ones you would like to check out. So I'm just gonna hop right in. First we're gonna start off with short stories. We have Pepper Pot which is a uh, combination of different uh, Caribbean authors. One of them is Bahamian, the majority of them I believe are Jamaican, but basically all of the authors in Pepper Pot are from the major 13 Caribbean countries that's being focused in the readathon. So if you want to check that out. Next we have An Evening in Guanima, A Treasury of Folktales from the Bahamas by Patrice Glinton Meliotas. Meliotas. I'm not really sure how to pronounce the last last part of her name but it's a collection of bahamian folk tales mostly for children per se but i believe children and adults would both enjoy it they feature different characters in bahamian folklore also glinton micholas has a few other books she has plays and some other books which are more satirical next is if i had wings by helen colandras growing up gay in the small like greek community we have here she was under a lot of scrutiny and pressure and she kind of draws from her own experiences with with her uh, different characters in her short stories that she portrays. It's more like different coming of age stories and I think that would be pretty interesting too. This is pretty much the only LGBT book that is going to be listed. Next we have Sand in My Shoes by Marina Gottlieb Sarles. They're pretty humorous stories that show Bahamian culture present in each one. She also has a historical fiction book called The Last Daughter of Prussia, which I ha don't have listed in here because obviously it's not taking place in the Bahamas, but if you are interested in historical fiction and you want to check that out. Next we're going to mystery slash thrillers. We have Shadow K by Leon Bodie. So after a rash of disasters, vigilante Madeline and detective Peter are destined for dark days as they hunt down this criminal who has no conscience. Next we have contemporary books we have The Leftover Daughters by S.L. Shepard. It takes place in Grand Bahama, which is one of the Bahamian Islands in the 1960s. So it's following this woman named Petra who is about to be married when she finds out that her husband has been unfaithful to her with this woman, Annie, who's kind of like the Obia woman in Grand Bahama. And basically it's following the life of Petra and Annie and their daughters, both of whom have the same father and how Annie and her witchcraft kind of influence their life and like do different things to them and like how they heal from that it's very interesting I actually think I might pick it up I've absolutely never heard of this book before nobody's ever talked about it before in my presence so next we have learning how to breathe by Janice Lynn Mathers and this is about a 16 year old girl who is sent by her grandmother to NAS which is the main island in the Bahamas, which is actually called in Providence, but most people just refer to it as Nassau. But she is sent to live with her aunt and she becomes pregnant there and her aunt really threatens to kick her out of the house. So basically the girl is searching for a place to call her own where she'll feel safe. Another book by Janice Lynn Mathers is called Facing the Sun. It's supposed to be like Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants meets The Education of Margot Sanchez. It takes place in the Bahamas for friends and their summer how their summer goes as different things happen in their lives and how their friendship goes as well. For religion and self-help, I only have one author, Dr. Miles Monroe. He has a lot of religious books and he also has a lot of self-help books with um, leadership and finding yourself and different things like that. He is the founder of probably the first mega church here, um, Bahamas Faith Ministries, and it's still um, 
going strong to this day. I've read lots of books by Dr. Miles Monroe and I just love his work um, so I do suggest that if you are interested in that genre. So for autobiography or memoirs we have Barefoot to Boardroom by Dr. Leon Higgs. It is taught him talking about his own experiences from growing up in the family islands. The family islands um, would be like the country um, in the early, in the mid 1900s to him helping create the College of the Bahamas which is now the University of the Bahamas and basically his experiences and how he got from where he was to where he is now he did not get complete his high school education until he was 21 but now he has a PhD I believe in philosophy so I just think it's going to show you like his life and how he struggled to get where he is today. Another book is by Sir Sidney Poitier and he has three autobiographies one written in 1980 called this life another written in 2000 called the measure of a man and the third one is called life beyond measure letters to my granddaughter and it was written in 2004 if you are interested in sir sydney poitier he was the first uh, black man to win a academy award and he won that in 1964 so just imagine the barriers he had to break he starred in a lot of movies where the themes were of race and like racial tensions and all that kind of stuff so he really broke barriers for black people in general so if you're interested in him and his life you can check it out um we also have a carnival of love a tale of a bahamian family by ernesta frazier it's told through the eyes of marie helix and it talks about how she has this happy family and then suddenly it's ripped away from her with her parents divorce and basically it goes through themes of love and family and how Marie struggles to like realize that what she thought reality was was not actually what reality was. For romance we had a lot of different authors I was quite surprised so I kind of narrowed it down a little bit. We have Wendy Coakley Thompson and she has three books that I want to highlight. She has Back to Life Trip and What You Won't Do for Love. So Back to Life is a young divorcee falls in love with a best-selling author and it just basically deals with their love and the different themes are um, racial politics and like different racism stuff that they have to overcome. Trip deals with this woman, Allie. Her husband, Jonathan, has a brain tumor and while she's tending to him, his cousin Tim and her are attracted to each other and Jonathan gives them this weird proposition that I think works out for all of them. And what you want to for love, Chaney Braxton has been betrayed and she gives up on men but suddenly Devin comes into the picture and she wonders if men aren't all that bad. Another author I want to highlight is Dia Mortimer. She has around or over 20 books. Most of them are set in the Caribbean, not all of them, but they all highlight Caribbean women as the main characters for the most part, I believe, and I don't want to go into all of her 20 books. Her creed as an author is, I like my women strong, but I like my men stronger. I like my sex raunchy, but meaningful. So if you're interested in stuff like that, definitely check her out. For history, we have Keith L. Tinker, and I'm just going to read his book titles that he has because they're self-explanatory. He has has the migration of peoples from the Caribbean to the Bahamas, the African diaspora to the Bahamas, and gateways to the New World, Bermuda, the Bahamas, and the shaping of the Americas. And if you're interested in stuff like that, definitely check it out. We also have Dr. Gail Saunders. I love her. I really want to be like her when I grow up. Like the type of stuff she's writing about, and the type of stuff she did. I want to do that too. I'm just gonna read through her book list as well because the titles are self-explanatory. It's Bahamian Society After Emancipation, NASA's Historical Landmarks, which I believe is more of a picture book, Bahamian Loyalists and Their Slaves, The Bahamas, A Family of Islands, Race and Class in the Colonial Bahamas, uh, 1880 to 1960. If you're interested in history, I would definitely pick up one of those two authors. If you're interested in the story of the Bahamas in general, there is also The Story of the Bahamas by Paul Aubrey. For poetry, we have Bahamian Scene by Susan J. Wallace. It has Bahamian dialect in there. I think it was written in the 1960s, so it's going to be talking about more of the themes in that happened during those times. That was before our independence 
things and it was also when there's a lot of racial tension going on so it will probably have different themes of that in there we also have native talk a collection of bahamian poetry by terry m bethel it's written in bahamian dialect as well and talks about everyday life and spins them into kind of humorous stories we also have island queens for girls who thought they weren't good enough by jewel monker moss and crystal monker it's based on the lives of bahamian women past present and future and the title is pretty self-explanatory i think it's just talking about empowering women and empowering bahamian women especially the last book in this category is i gave it to the pages by zemi holland holland draws on her own experiences in this book her mother died at 12 at 12 at 12 at 12 and so i know that must have been super painful so she talks a lot about pain love different musings like that so if you're interested in those kinds of things then check that book out for plays we have two we have back home a collection of plays poetry and poets so it's not just plays in this book it's also it's also poem and a few different prose this is also by susan j wallace and once again it's also depicting life and culture in the bahamas in the 1960s i don't know if it's written in bahamian dialect i'm not quite sure i would lean more towards saying yes but i've never seen the book so i don't know um then we also have women take two by telson turner it is a play in three acts dealing with love and greed i hope y'all will check out some of these books i will probably leave the link to some of the goodreads and or amazon stuff down below but that's all for now i'll check y'all later don't forget you're special and god loves you very much